Well, hello everyone. Hey, it is Karen McDermott Rolf here, Independent Advisor with Creative Memories. And today I am back with my monthly technique layout and challenge. I'm going to share a scrapbooking technique with you and then challenge all of you to use the technique to create your own version of my layout. Take a photo of your version of your layout and share it with me on Facebook at Karen's Croppers for an entry into my April door prize drawing. You can also find more of my layouts and also, and also registration information for my virtual and in-person events at karencrops.com. And I so appreciate your purchases through my Creative Memories website link at creativememories.com backslash user backslash Karen, and it's Karen with the Y. And I offer a generous customer rewards program. And right now I'm offering a bonus customer rewards gift to everyone who places a $50 purchase uh, order or purchase with me until April 15th, okay? And also before we get started, I'd like to personally invite all of you to attend two different virtual events with me this month. The first is on April 20th, and that is my own personal National Scrapbook Day workshop. I'll be on Zoom on the 20th to create my exclusive layouts with you. But if you can't be on Zoom, no worries, because everything will be recorded and I'll have printable handouts so you can make the layouts on your own. Now, I used the, the NSD customer bundle from Creative Memories, along with some extra cardstock and a variety of tools to create my exclusive layouts. I did use the Spring Leaves Frame Punch and the Fresh Flower Punch on every layout, either in combination or individually. And I used those punches in some unique ways to give you different ideas for how to use them. Also, these um, layouts are exclusive, so I'm not going to be sharing them anywhere else. They're also um, really cute, you guys. They turned out really nice. Um, they're layered. They've got a lot of different little techniques incorporated. Um, there's, they're not difficult, I like to say that, but they do. They are, there are several steps to create these layouts because they're pretty intricate and really, really super cute. I won't share them anywhere else because they're exclusive to this event. I'm going to honor the um, fee that everyone is paying to have access to these layouts. And then I'm gonna ask all of you to please do this too by not sharing these layouts. The second event is the Creative Life Scrapbooking PJ Party Virtual Crop on Friday, April 26th. We'll be on Zoom that night, but again, everything will be recorded and there's printable handouts. And we're gonna be sharing um, layout instructions for seven double page layouts. And the layouts each feature um, either a technique or a unique feature, and they're versatile. So you can use your stash, you could use any paper, any collection with them, and also they allow for easy tool substitution. And to register for that event, please go to creativelifescrapbooking.com to register. I'll put the registration links for both of those events in the comments below this video. So to get started with uh, the technique today, I just know you guys are going to love it because I know you love quick and easy and you love them especially when we can use our tools in a different way. And also, you know, it's quick and easy, but yet it's gonna give you really lovely results. So take a look at this pretty page here that I made using the border maker system with two of our chain border maker cartridges. Okay, so I really love this treatment here. I think that's really a, a beautiful, beautiful design element added to this layout. I did use the Something Blue collection for this. If you recall from my video last month, I also used the Something Blue collection, but I used the blue papers. So I wanted to show you that there are green papers also in the Something Blue collection along with some grays in, in smoky blue colors also. So here I did some clustering with stickers and embellishments, a variety mat. And then I used two different chain style border maker cartridges. Now the chain style cartridges are the ones that when you punch them, you will get a chain that falls right off of your paper. You don't need your trimmer, you don't need to cut it off, it just falls right off into a chain. And it's going to have chain in the name of that border maker cartridge also. So here is the brocade chain border maker cartridge, and I paired it with the wispy frame border maker cartridge. 
and I alternated those to get this um, beautiful treatment here. So to make my layout today, I'm going to use a different collection with a, a different border maker cartridge. I'm going to use the, the Welcome Baby collection. Now the paper pack for Welcome Baby, I must say I really love it. It's really pretty and it has some really versatile prints in there. There's some fl florals, some leaves, some stripes that are not baby. You know, you can use them for baby layouts, but you can use them for other layouts also. There's two really cute sheets in there. Um, well, let me grab them and show you these two cute sheets. <laughs> these are two that I especially like. This one has the little bunnies on it. The back side has some wood grain, which we always love. Now I'm gonna be using this for an Easter layout that I'll be sharing soon with Creative Life Scrapbooking next week. So stay tuned for that. So again, you know, these prints could be used for babies, but also for spring, I think. And then also the, the second print that I really love is with the, the geese on it and the little goslings, the little babies here. So again, you could use this for babies, but also for spring or Easter layouts too. The back side of that is just a neutral with a white with little gray flex, okay? And then like I mentioned, there's some other kind of neutral prints. And there is this one print here that is very baby and it is the, the wood blocks with the alphabet. So that is definitely baby. But on the back side, we have just a nice versatile check, kind of white with beige check. And then I'm also going to pair it today with this sheet of, um, oh, it's kind of dark sea green color, a Creative Memories color with the star sparkle on one side. And the back side has a little dotted stripe, but we'll use it on this side. And then I'm also going to be using our new Bears Chain Border Maker cartridge. So it punches a little chain of teddy bears. Let's see if you can... There we go. And then in addition to that, you'll need your 12-inch trimmer. So to get started, we're going to cut the sheet that's going to be on top here. We're going to cut that down to 11 and a half by 11 and a half. So that means I'm going to take a half an inch off of two sides. Okay. And then I'm going to be layering it on top of the, the teal piece. Now, if we take a look at my sample layout, um, I had the diagonal piece here going on the bottom left. I think today I'm going to do it on the bottom right. So we need to keep, you need to figure that out and know um, which way to cut this triangle off. We're gonna cut a diagonal here. So since I'm going to be doing my triangle on the bottom right side, I am going to, let's see, I am going to cut it or mark it with a pencil and a ruler three inches from the bottom right. So I'm gonna put a little mark right there. Whoops. I've already made a little error. It's gotta be higher. It's gotta be up here. It's from the top right, three inches, okay? So from the top right here, I'm gonna make a mark at three inches. And now we're gonna think about it. We're gonna cut it diagonally this way. So now on the bottom left corner, we're gonna measure over three inches. Okay, so again, three inches from the bottom left, okay, three inches over, and then three inches from the top right corner, we're gonna measure down and make an inch, or a little mark. And now where I've had those marks, I'm gonna place my pencil marks on the left dashed cutting line, because that's where the trimmer is going to cut, on that left dashed cutting line, and I'm going to put both of my pencil marks on that, that line so I can cut a diagonal piece. Now I love using this measurement here because it can fit in the trimmer. You know, if we wanted to cut it here, it's not gonna fit in the trimmer, right? And so by doing it this way at this mark at the three inches, we could use the trimmer and get a nice straight edge and I don't have to cut it with scissors. I'm gonna take my eraser and I'm just gonna erase the little pencil mark that's still remaining. Okay. And now the piece will be like this on our layout, but we're going to take the border maker system here and we're going to punch this triangle piece. So I'm going to open up my tray, open up the arm. And now when I do this, I'm going to use 
the punches from the back side of the, the block paper. Okay, now if you take a look again at my sample layout, oops, I, um, I used the borders were punched from the same side here, this floral green I had up. But this time I'm gonna flip it and use it on the back side. So that means I'm going to flip this to the back side to the white check pattern and put it in the tray. And look at there how perfectly it fits in the tray. So again, that's the measurement there of, of cutting it at the, that three inch diagonal. I'm going to insert my bare chain border maker cartridge and I'm going to punch. I'm lining up the embossed marking here on the lever with the embossed notches on the arm and that is when I punch. Okay. And now I'm going to continue opening it up, putting my leftover triangle in, and I'm going to center the triangle on the tray. So see the two the markings there on the tray? I've just centered that triangle right there. And now as the triangle gets smaller, when I punch it, I am going to punch the two outside um, edges first. So I'm going to do this one first there at the top, and then I'm going to come to the very bottom and punch that one. Okay, and I do that because if I'd started at the top and gone all the way to the bottom, by the time I get here, the chain is pretty much falling off and it's not being held in the, by the arm anymore and I can't make that last punch. So it's important that you, you punch um, those edges first, okay? And then just go back and punch it in the middle. Now also remember on my first layout, I alternated cartridges. So I punched it with the first time with the brocade and then the second time I punched it with the wispy and then I repeated the brocade and the wispy again. But this time I'm just going to use the Teddy Bear border maker cartridge for all of my punches. But if you want to change it up and, and do it, you know, pair this with, um, pair together two of the chain style, that would be great. Or you could pair together, or not pair wouldn't be the right word, but um, put together, you know, three or even four of the cartridges, right? And do something really kind of crazy, right? So again, I'm, I'm down here at the end, and I still have enough for my last piece that it's gonna hold in the arm. I've centered it in the tray, and now I'm gonna punch that top edge first. And then I'm gonna scooch it here and punch the bottom edge next. Okay, and then I'm gonna put it back in and punch in the middle to get my little teddy bear piece. And then we're gonna have a remaining triangle that we're going to use. So let me just clear up the little debris. Again, we'll just we'll just kind of lay it out. So my longest piece will go first. And see how I've got the edges, it meets up perfectly, and the bears are kind of are in an upright position. Now, this is something to take note of. I'm gonna show you in a sec that the first time I was recording my video <laughs> in my paper selection, I was using um, different papers and I wanted to put the, the diagonal at the top and I wanted to use the back side of the floral print. The back side of the floral is the teal. Okay, and I thought that would be really pretty, right? I, I still love this combination. But when I went to put the teddy bears on, the angle was not right. See that? And even if I had it on the floral side, the angle is not right. So to make it right, I had to put my teddy bears upside down. See, now the angle's right. You see that? So that was problematic to me. Um, I just, I didn't, you know, it's, it's really pretty. I love the paper combination, but the, um, 
the bears are upside down. And so then I thought, well, maybe I could just turn it and let's see. So if I turn it so the bears are upright, now the flowers are going horizontal. And that was off to me. Or if I turned it this way, the bears, are, the bears work, but now the flowers are upside down. So it didn't work for me. So I, you know, I, I thought about this. I, I played with some scrap paper and was trying to figure it out and everything. And it was just like, it, you know, it posed a challenge because this border maker cartridge, the bears, it's directional, right? You've got an upright position. And the paper has an upright, has a position too, it's upright. And if we refer back to my original layout, these were all kind of tonal. This had a floor um, leaf pattern, which it didn't matter which way it went, up, upside down, sideways, it didn't matter. And then the same, and I used that same size here. So when I put it all together, you know, that really didn't, it didn't matter. But now all of a sudden when I'm using a paper that's directional and a border maker cartridge that's directional, it mattered, okay? So I would recommend that you maybe just select papers that, that are not directional, it might be a little easier, or you just really think it out, like I did here, because the alphabet, the block paper is directional. These letters, this is the upright. So I knew again that if I, you know, if I cut that, that top right corner, I would still have the situation of the bears being upside down. But then I figured out if I cut the diagonal at, at the bottom, either the bottom right or the bottom left, the bears will be upright. Okay. So I hope I didn't overly confuse you with all of that. Maybe that's a little bit information overload for you. But I just wanted to give you a warning because I was really disappointed myself when that turned out that way. And then I ended up kind of ruining those pieces of paper. I'll, fi I'll find a way to make it work. You know, I'll take it apart and I'll use that paper, those papers for some in some other way. So they're not gonna go to waste exactly, but um, I just wanted to give you a warning about that. Also, you're probably gonna to want to use your repositional uh, tape runner here, tape refills for your borders. Most likely the borders are a little intricate and um, you'll need that repositional. Also, you know, really pay attention to, to the papers that you select for the bear and the papers that you put the, the bears on. If it's, uh, too stark, too bright, too too much of a pattern. You're not. It's going to overwhelm the bears, and you're. You know, it's going to obscure the bear pattern. So you can see here that I've done. Uh, you know, it's kind of a tonal. It almost. You know, it reads almost as a solid. This teal paper, and then the bears are punched here on the side. Also, that's tonal that's reading kind of solid. So you can get some nice contrast and I, I can really see the bears good. Um, I did experiment. You know, if we look again, well, I'll show you. Hold on, let me stick this down. And you're gonna to wanna to use the reposition on in case you need to kind of move these pieces a little bit after you stick them down too. But going back to this, this first piece that I punched, you know, I was going to use it on this side, but if I wanted to use it on that side, you know, that pattern's not gonna look very nice as the bear, right? And then I did play around with a different combination. I really liked the gingham, and I really wanted to use that gingham in some way, and I couldn't really make it work, because again, look at the gingham bear. It just, um, let me try to get, I think it just kind of obscures the bear pattern. It's like overwhelms those little bears. So I didn't think the gingham was a very good choice. Now this uh, side would have been a better choice. Um, but see, using it on the gingham, I don't think is a good choice. So again, you know, pay pay attention to the, the patterns that you're selecting and how they're going to look on top of each other to give you some nice contrast. You could also use um, some cardstock too, you know, is always kind of a, a foolproof way um, 
that you could combine a designer paper with a card stock. But I really, I really liked combining the, the two pieces of the designer paper instead of cardstock because, you know, just kind of amps up the cuteness factor because even though it's, it's reading is a kind of a tonal, it does have a little pattern in it. And I, th I thought it was, it was uh, more, it was cuter this way instead of using cardstock. I'm kind of chatty today, aren't I? <laughs> Maybe again, I'm giving you too much information. I must say this is like the third time that I've shot the video because um, after that happened with the, the upside down bears, um, I tried it again and it was still upside down. <laughs> so, so this is my third try. Third time is the charm, huh? But I, I really like this now. Look at how, how the bears really pop on that out of that lighter color. And I think what I did right here, did you guys notice that as I did it? Because what was I doing? I was chatting and not paying close enough attention. I needed, I needed to put it on the other side. I need the blocks showing, I think. There we go, that's gonna look better. So I'm just going to rub off that repositional tape. There. There we go. See how much better that looks with, on that side like that? And then again, taking a peek at that my original. So this time, you know, I'm using the three papers, you know, because I'm using that back side. I've got the teal. I have the blocks. I have the little... Uh, plaid here for the bears, but this one I'm only using, you know, the two papers showing. So different ways to change it up, huh? I do have some baby photos of my granddaughter Sophia that's going to work. And I was taking a look at some of, you know, I've not scrapbooked all of them. In some of the hospital photos, she was wrapped in a little teal blanket, a uh, little hospital blanket. And so I think um, this is going to work really well for some of those photos. And I took a look at them and they were in the horizontal position. So this is going to be good. I'm gonna do these horizontal where again, if you noticed on my last layout, I did them more vertical and I did three, I did two smaller mats here. This time I'm only gonna do two bigger ones. So then I took a look at the Welcome baby embellishments. Now, the embellishment packs, you get two choices. You get a purple choice and a blue choice. Now, both of them have some pieces that are neutral, kind of in the wood grain, wood tones. But then the other pieces, and I had I had purchased the, the purple pack. So there's other pieces then, if you can see, that have used the purple ice color from Creative Memories. Now, I did not want to use any of those purple pieces on this layout because that's like introducing a fourth color. And I kind of like to just use use three colors when, I, when I'm when i working. So I've kind of, you know, I've got the wood tone here. I've got the teal. I've got the, the white here. So I wanted to leave it at that because I thought when I introduced the purple, it just it was just too stark. So I went through the paper, the embellishment pack, and I pulled out the embellishments that were more neutral out of the wood grain. And then I thought, you know, it needs it needs something else. It needs something more. This is not enough. So I love Creative Memories for many reasons. Obviously, I love them. But recently we had an embellishment buffet where we had an opportunity to buy some floral embellishments. So they had six different colors, packs of these flowers. And when you when you purchased all six, you got a free pack of stickers. And I loved how these coordinate with the Welcome Baby. And I'm sure that they coordinate with lots of our other collections also because Creative Memories pays attention to that. So I pulled out some of the flowers from the teal embellishment pack here. So we had some of the teal flowers. Also from the yellow flowers, um, I really like this. It's kind of a dark, it's kind of a gold craft color. It's got a little speckle in it, like out of craft paper, a little distressed. So did these. And so I thought that could be a, a, an option too. 
Okay, I have finished embellishing my layout and I just thought I'd give you guys a peek of that. So I did um, pair those floral essential flower embellishments using the yellow and the teal packs and adding some flowers and then also using some baby pieces from the welcome baby embellishments along with some of the little epoxy pieces. So I created some clusters again trying to kind of stay with that rule of odd numbers. So you know a grouping of three so I have the two flowers and the leaves, the two flowers and the leaves over here one two three four but then I put the little epoxy dots so I'm kind of counting counting those as my fifth embellishment and then I've arranged them in the visual triangle to help move our eye around the layout so we go from here or probably we start here at the top go down down and over so that helps to move our eye all around the layout so we could take in everything. And it also adds a little subliminal movement to the layout that makes it more dynamic and a little bit more interesting to look at. All right, again, everybody, thanks again. Bye-bye.